in the same boat here. <laughs> yeah, last Friday we, we spoke with grief, and one of the natural things that happens when one is grieving, if you look at Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's stages of grief, one of the first ones is anger, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So welcome, everyone. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see you and have this uh, get together. Thank you for coming and, and know that you're always in, welcome to invite friends too. Sean has invited a few people, some of you have, and people ask, and of course, we want this to reach as many people as possible because um, it's good for all of us to connect this way and talk about some of these difficult topics and you know, sometimes fun topics also. Yeah, so we picked this topic of anger, even though it's well, a touchy subject, I guess you could say, but it's something that's coming up so much for all of us. And we wanted to share some ideas about how to work with it, but before we do that, we really want to hear from you as well about what's coming up, what, well, how your anger is coming up, and what you're doing about it, or what's making you angry. Um, some of those things we're not supposed to feel or talk about, right? So here we are with a safe place to feel it and talk about it. Yeah, and we were talking about it, how it also depends on your upbringing, whether an expression of anger uh, uh, was safe, whether there were discussions afterwards, or whether you could even allow yourself, maybe, maybe um, you know, you grew up in an environment where anger expression was dangerous, where there was domestic violence or um, there were threats and, and you have the survival strategy to suppress your anger. But now within this lengthy um, time of, of digging deep within yourself, all kinds of suppressed things might come up. And I, I see that in myself, I see that in many of the people I talk to or work with or um, assist also um, with illness or dying. And like we just said, the, the stages of grieving really keep on rolling. And one of the stages is anger. And um, I'm noticing not only due to grieving or loss, but there are many things people are triggered about. I hear uh, people sharing when I ride my bicycle without a mask, people try to stop me on the bicycle and uh, you know, lecture with me or scream at me, wear your mask, or people who uh, are seen as toilet paper hoarders, they're, they are <laughs> the target of anger. Or um, if, you know, you, you, you see your grandchildren and then other people don't want to see you, then the people who don't want to see you are nuts because they are overly cautious. So there are all kinds of expressions of either subtle or very, very clear anger uh, where uh, there's domestic violence where there are or it goes to the other side it goes to depression and to sadness and then it flips around so it goes through all these stages of going back to maybe numbness and denial and then it goes to the other side of it and to anger and but what I was noticing it really also depends on how you so far allowed yourself to grow into handling your frustration, your anger. And again, if it maybe was even dangerous for you to go there and you didn't learn how to safely express it. So it's either bottled up and, and explode, it explodes in your environment with your significant other or with your family or with yourself. So these are a few things we wanna to touch upon. Um, Self-directed anger, anger directed to someone who is safe, right? Sometimes you direct anger to someone who, who is safe and where you know you're not threatened, but then that person has to deal with it. So um, viewing how we so far learned how to deal with it and what we can 
maybe change and how we can release it and what what we can avoid or how we can safely express it that that's our goal of the day here and um i don't know if you want to say something or if we yeah. open it up okay mm -hmm. well i know for me my mental mind judges my emotions especially one like anger and you know it has its commentary it says well i should feel this i shouldn't feel that this feeling's a good feeling that feeling's a bad feeling and when i have a a bad feeling, what do I do with it, right? I tend to internalize it or suppress it, shove it down, but all feelings just really want expression. Whether we call them good or bad, they want, they want out. Um, and the problem is when, when I suppress or we suppress anger, it's like a pressure cooker. The pressure builds up and it's going to come out in some explosive and maybe even harmful way or it gets internalized and it causes harm to myself. And I did a session for someone the other day who's a healthcare professional and during most of the, and her big topic was anger, right? She's had a lot of loss or over the last years. She really has a lot to be angry about, but she's continuing to be a healer, a nice person, a good mother. Um, and that anger is so internalized. And during the entire session, what was she doing? She was biting her nails, picking, picking on herself, right? The body is very literal. And there was this picking on herself. So she's not expressing it, but internalizing it and harming herself with it. So one of the things we want to do with you today is, is find a way for you to be able to identify your anger and, and express it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there. Yeah. Somebody at our door. First time that's happened in two months, <laughs> right? So um, before we talk too much, what we wanted to do was invite you, if there was some um, uh, anger coming up for you, um, to invite you to talk about that, and then and then we'll begin to work with it. So you could just unmute yourself and. If you have some way that you're coping or not coping with it, then share that too before we do our exercises. All good? Okay. Okay. Did that make you angry? No. <laughs> Actually, it was a nice young man who, in front of our door. <laughs> Where did he come from? <laughs> So what's coming up for you? What's making anybody angry these days? And how are you dealing with it or not dealing with it? Be brave and unmute yourself. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, well, I thought until very recently that anger is something that I don't usually experience. Somehow, uh, I realized that it's, I had this habit of suppressing it a lot. Don't give myself the permission to feel that anger and confront it. So it's working in very subtle ways. Uh, so when I came to this realization, uh, what I chose to do was to, in my own safe environment, give myself the permission to express it uh, verbally uh, to myself, mm -hmm. observe it, and just stay with it without attempting to judge it, mm -hmm. just observe, accept, and uh, let my body process it, and let myself process it emotionally. It's not always easy, uh, but uh, I think it's important to recognize these small bursts, or maybe bigger, uh, but uh, allowing them to come out in a hopefully confined environment so that it doesn't necessarily have to be expressed in an aggressive way. Just like any other emotion, it's part of us and it's just one's recognition. That's how I choose to deal with it. Thank you really for sharing that because I, I personally can really relate to this, um, maybe having to be above anger because we should know better and we, we are, you know, kind people, or we are spiritual, or we are helpers, and 
and so on. And then all of a the sudden there is this layer of, wow, how am I going to deal with that? And um, I think it's very correct what you say. It's one of the emotions we have in the human experience. And because it's such a social taboo, it has, it lives in a dark corner. It's like an abandoned part of you, which is kind of locked away. But the more you can say you belong to me and I handled you with love and care and in a safe way, um, the more we can express it in a safe way to ourselves and to others. Yeah. We watched a funny movie last night. Yeah with Jack Nicholson you called might all them know that, yeah. Anger Management. It's a pretty old film. From 2003, uh, we dug it out. It feels a bit dated, but it's hilarious and it's really, it's good. So <laughs> Adam Sandler is this very nice guy, you mm -hmm. know, that really um, never expresses his feelings. He's always nice, happy. People use him like a doormat. He's really um, stepped on so much. And then finally, he, he blows. He doesn't even realize when he does. But um, that's often the case, I think, is someone is Mr. Nice Guy, or, and then they get triggered. And if, if you're not triggered during these last few months, then you'll never be triggered, I guess. But I think we all are in various ways. So another. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in my family constellation with mm -hmm. training with Bert Hellinger, you, you mm -hmm. all might maybe know about Bill Hellinger, who, who was the founder of the family constellation uh, therapy. And he said to us, watch out for the nice ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In his way, you know, he was like very, watch out for the nice ones. Mm. Those are always just nice and kind of holy and whatever. Uh oh, watch out. <laughs> and it's really true because what is the other side? We have to look at our other side. We have to look at sun and darkness mm -hmm. within ourselves. I think Eske makes a really good point too, is yeah. I think it's, it's not about not being angry because we all get angry, no matter how holy or spiritual we might be, but it's about finding a safe way to express it, right? It's mm -hmm. finding that a way that doesn't cause harm to ourselves or to someone else, and anger can feel, my experience of anger growing up was it was something violent, scary, hurtful. And so you weren't supposed to express it. No. But it's when you don't express it that it becomes that. And so finding a safe way, whether it's, well, we talked about different ways to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Stomp on a bottle, throw something, write something, yell, scream, say it. You know, I, I went to a therapist once who gave me a tennis racket and said, oh, here, beat this on the couch. It felt ridiculous. That was for me. That wasn't a okay way to express it. It felt contrived. It didn't work. You need to find a safe way to let that energy out, and there are many ways to do that. And for others, might that that might work. Yeah, you know? I mean, sure. Who else would like to share? Mm -hmm. Franklin. Yay! Uh, I I often uh, behave as the Mr. Nice Guy. Mm. I recognize this from myself. In my uh, upbringing, um, in my family, anger was not allowed. It wasn't there, it was not allowed. Yeah. So, um, and then, in hindsight, uh, I, um, I express my, when I'm angry, <laughs> in my face. I don't know that uh, I'm doing this. And my wife says to me, why are you so, are you so angry? <laughs> and I said, I'm not angry, but it's, I, must, I must be angry somehow. And it gives me a lot of to think about because, uh, of course, I want to be Mr. Nice Guy, but uh, uh, in practice, uh, uh, it's not what everybody <laughs> always sees. So uh, when someone say you look, why, why do you look so angry? I'm not angry. And so uh, it gives me a lot of thoughts now at the moment. Often your, your partner is a good mirror, isn't it? Mm. Oh, very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> we have. Uh, I told you uh, this this October we are we are together fifty years. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's a long time. Beautiful. Yeah. And we so we managed. Yeah. Yeah. We did. More than managed. Yeah. 
Mm. Maybe yeah, even inspired. Like yeah. Yeah. Someone else want to share? Sanella. Yay, Sanella. <laughs> Go for it. Hi. <laughs> well, um, I think it also has to do a lot of uh, where you were brought up, like the culture, you know, Absolutely. the environment. Yeah. And in my country, <laughs> when you get angry, you swear a lot. <laughs> you get it out. Oh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, of course, it's, uh, it's not something you do all the time, but at least when you're alone, <laughs> you, can, you can get it out this way, you know? Mm. And um, then with years, I, I replaced this, this way of, and then I understood that actually, Lately, in the last past years, I don't get angry very much because I try to see the situation from different angles and somehow understand it deep inside that what makes me angry. And if I somehow just change my attitude and get rid of this energy in a way that it's, um, I don't know, it's, it disappears. I use, sometimes I use the meditations mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. but my son, the youngest, uh, gets angry a lot. So we do the balloon technique. So mm -hmm. we blow the balloons, mm -hmm. different colors, yeah. <laughs> make them very big and, and it helps a lot. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, last time, or, or in our last meeting, we talked about wanting things to be different than they are. Mm -hmm. And when things aren't the way I want them to be, or think they should be, or think I need them to be, then often it's, it's anger that comes up, right? And I understand what you're saying about looking at it from a different angle or letting go of it, wanting it to be other than it is. Yeah, that, that's very helpful. Yeah. I mean, it's a healthy emotion. It's important. It wouldn't be there if it wasn't necessary for us to survive, mm -hmm. to evolve. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it's our also, um, it's our, our decision how we deal with it. And I think if I get angry and um, it cannot bring anything good because it, I will feel bad and the other person will feel bad. So just to look at it differently and yeah. Thank you. Um, but, but I also think if you really feel it and you express it in a safe way, also in yes. front of another person, yeah. Um, yeah. If, if, you, if you are self-regulated and you can say, this makes me really angry now, and I don't direct it towards you, but I have to say that I'm now angry. And then I am, whatever, I'm saying this. Okay, then I did this and I, I, I have control over it still in a certain way and I'm not harming the other person because I'm still self-regulated. It's different from losing your cool totally and then really throwing it towards the other person and then that person not being self-regulated enough to understand, aha, you're angry, you're triggered, it's not about me, you're just throwing something and I'm not catching it. Then, then we still have a healthy release, and and you know, and it's not what you just mentioned, Sanella. For me, at least, then you are not in the remorse of it. Then you didn't self harm yourself, and you didn't harm the other. But that takes practice. At least for for me, it took a ton of practice because, like Paul, I grew up in an environment where anger expression for me was completely. I mean not just zero, like minus a million. And um, so to really learn, even just to know that I'm angry, that took years. And then to understand how to not either just blur, blur it out, uncontrolled or um, suppress it and harm myself and become depressed, go to the other side of it. Um, that took a long time too. And so I'm saying the self-regulation within it takes away the remorse of it. So I used to have a dog which I adopted from a shelter and he was greatly abused. As a matter of fact, the vet who examined him said, if I wouldn't know you would take him, I would have to put him asleep because he was such a, what we call fear biter. 
So when I was touching him from coming from above, he would always go like this because he was beaten so much and trying to bite. Now, over time, he understood that I was safe, but he still would have these uncontrolled anger outbursts and sometimes attack a smaller dog and I would have to tear him off and he would bite me. And he would go into remorse for days. He would just lay on his pillow and look at me. Oh my God, I bit you, the one I, I adore and love. And I learned so much from him. I really learned back then, oh my gosh, he, he was abused. He didn't know how to handle his anger. His anger still comes out and then he bites the one he loves and then he goes into remorse. And that was a teaching for me back then in my 20s. I really, from him, I learned how to, to handle my own. It was a beautiful teaching. So thank you for giving this food of thought so that this, this came out. I, I didn't mean to share that, but it just came. So, yeah. Before we do our first practice, does one more person have something to share? I think I see Jana's hand, Jana's hand up. Yes, and I think Sarah also raised her hand. Sorry okay. if my connection is, is not very uh, stable. Yes, I wanted to also acknowledge what Sunil and, and Sophia said, because we are taught from early um, childhood uh, not to express anger um, in, um, in public in any mm. way. We have this, uh, we learn this way of suppressing it and then feeling guilty. And therefore, anger is such a difficult emotion to deal with because we have this double um, cork, you know, of guilt and double remorse cork, yeah. of dealing <laughs> with it. Yeah. If you're sad, if you're lonely, you're like, you are free to share these things and, uh, and start the healing process. But with anger, it is so much more difficult. I, I was growing up in a family where expressing anger was kind of okay it was not healthy but it was okay but it did not take the remorse of the words mm. of the of not feeling that it is right i think the soul knows that there's other ways of dealing it so this is kind of snowballs uh and then in fact it was a re revelation for me to see that i'm not good at expressing it but i'm actually very good at suppressing it which mm. makes it as a pressure cooker and this pressure cooker just starts to express or to blow up more and more um, frequently if you are not addressing. And we as a therapist have, um, you know, have learned to make space for our clients to be expressive in the safe space of the therapy room. And for me to also this kind of learning for others have been incredible self-healing because I have learned to also make space for myself to express it, but not just to express it, but to also a way of um, knowing myself. Where does this come from? What am I attached to? What am I idolizing? What is the sense of justice or injustice? And sometimes this feeling when I feel it coming, I can not only make space for it to dissolve but i can also kind of redirect it into more um healthy active uh things so it is an energy and if we don't judge it as bad and good it can be redirected and used for the good of humanity or progress um in a way you know i feel it <laughs> so it is um i think an important thing to realize um, that anger is not bad or good, that there is way of, it, it is your sense of internal justice that has to be respected, but the way it can be um, dealt with is different and making space for it as we do for our clients. And therefore I like to have my, my practice space to be soundproof, lots of cushions <laughs> and rackets oh. because it is, um, it is making space and uh, the only thing I, i'll mention it um the only thing i was worried about is that if if we learn to express it in the room like this that people would go and uh express it the same way in the future that was my concern and a stumbling block mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i have um 
um, you remember even in, uh, in our November class, I was saying I'm not comfortable in giving the anger or frustration to the yeah. source of the problem. But then I've learned to actually um, this trick that you have to put the client in yourself. So how does that person feel when you direct all that anger at them? And that actually... Well, I think the, the key is really to find that safe way to express it that doesn't cause harm uh, to mm -hmm. yourself or to another place or to your environment. That's, that's really the key. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to take um, Sarah's comment and then we're going to do a practice, okay? Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Diana. I have to unmute you. There you go. Yeah, I have different ways of expressing anger or not. And what for me, probably the most healthy way is sometimes I just feel this huge energy coming from below the soles of my feet and it just moves through me. But it's not with the story, it's more the energy shifting. Mm. And I love if I've got a really strong person where I can just sort of push against. Mm. And that for me is one of the healthy ways. I also, or don't express it, and I feel as if I just hold it in my body. Things sometimes when I'm angry at something, I just almost yeah. just pause everything and stop everything, and I hold my breathing. Yeah. And I think that's because either, either I don't know how to express it, I don't know what words to use at that time, or um, I'm afraid of what the consequences will be. Mm -hmm. Ostracized, being, you know, standing out, out of the group. So I love when I can express it and feel it through the energy and yeah, but different ways. And often it is um, people not being the way I think they should be. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say, not ashamed. <laughs> it makes me really pissed off. Yeah. 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 Let's, do, so let's do this. Let's have you all unmute your microphones. Can everyone do that? And we shift away from words. I, I heard you say, Sarah, mm. I don't find the right words. Anger doesn't always need words. Mm. You know, I, I grew up with hearing the tongue is the, the sharpest mm. knife. In other words, when you use words with your anger, it's the sharpest knife. So um, just as a food for thought in terms of words. So let's shift towards expressing anger and anger in a way without words. <laughs> if we want to. So you can do this with your eyes open. And just take a moment to think about or remember a time in a recent or distant past about something that made you angry. Just go back to a time that made you angry. I'm trying to. That is not. Okay. And just notice where in your body you feel that. Place your hand there. Mm -hmm. Breathe into and feel that. Don't judge it, just feel it. There's a sensation in your body. Goes with it. Mm -hmm. Breathe into it. Nice deep breath and let out a good groan or even a roar. That's right. Uh huh. One more time. Lion. Avoid judging it, breathe into it, just let it go. No need to hold it in. Express it, feel it. That's right. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. See, throat closes up, let it open. You don't have to yell loud, you can express it energetically. Just like lava in a volcano, blasting it out. That's right. Smile, really go there. You don't have to be nice. 
just be ugly. You can use a pillow, you can scream into the pillow, you can go to the beach or in, in, the, in the garden or wherever. You can do it in your car, uh, but not when you're driving. Uh, you can uh, do a silent scream. You can inhale and that's right sarah he's getting there <laughs> Uh, be, be like a big cat who says, no way. Or like the dog who shakes it off. Ah. And as right into your uh, That's right. Uh -huh. As you do that, you'll notice that something else comes up. There's something there behind your anger. There's something there beneath your anger. And what comes up for you? What's beneath your anger? What's behind Badness. it? What is it? Yeah. Sadness. Yeah. Sadness. Sadness. Yeah. yeah. Sadness. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The tears which you yeah. swallowed. Yeah. Yeah. Abandonment. Abandonment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. What are we? Injustice. 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 <gasps> yeah. Injustice. Okay. For me, it's laughter. I don't know why. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's laughter. already really the other side. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's not what you suppressed, but that's when you are through it. Then yeah. the humor can come back. Yeah. One of my teachers once said that anger is fear announced, that there's fear behind anger. I know that's the case for me. Often I'm afraid that I go to that protector or survivor mode of aggression right so fear and sadness are two big ones often behind it someone else want to share what they what came up or how it felt to release that um, sadness came up but i could feel it all in my body from the years of choking down words and my back was tightening, my throat was constricting, my heart was constricting. It was quite overwhelming to um, really let it go. But lots of tears. Yeah. Thank you, Beverly. And also how you really realize how we hold it in the body. Yeah. Yeah. We have some background yeah, sound here. We have, aha, uh -huh. okay, all right, good. Yeah, absolutely. So how we hold it in the body. So for me, really the other side of the anger is first the tears. And when we move through what that ever, that is the abandonment, which causes tears, the injustice, which causes tears, the loneliness, the trauma, the whatever, so many things, the loss, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Um, so do, do you want to continue exploring with that? Is that okay for you? Do, you? do you feel you could do another internal exercise with this? Yeah, Martina, are you okay? Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Let's just continue with that. Let's explore this. Let's go within and really connect within. However you go in and however you center yourself. And if you can connect to breathing and we can for, for a moment we can do just really breathing into the pain. Some are really there already. Yeah. So behind the big black curtain or the iron wall of anger is the pain, the sadness, the loss, the abandonment, the injustice, the grief. Yeah. And notice for yourself that you were in so many positions in this lifetime already where you worked through this curtain or this iron wall and you went to the other side and you realized what is behind the anger, what is the sea and ocean of emotions within you or the restrictions you hold in your body or and let the tears if the tears are there let them really be there it's it's what it is now tapping into that allowing yourself breathing into it here in this moment it's a safe place to go there and assure your body that it's safe in this moment to connect with whatever comes up. And really dive deep into what is behind the anger, dive through it and realize that here the tears are exactly the tears which need to be cried. The tears which were not seen or heard and you try to be so brave and suppress and not be a burden or not be silly or be strong for others or whatever it might be. And if you have the strength to do so, just rewind a bit and recognize the spiral you were in, the spiral of triggers, all the different triggers which contributed to the anger and the curtain or the wall of anger and the sea and ocean of emotions and tears within you. Recognize the spiral. What led to this? What are your triggers? What is it what triggers you? And what leads maybe to an escalation of anger and a build up of that iron wall or that curtain and then a build up of that sea of emotions and the ocean of tears within you. And recognize how you can maybe during a trigger, recognize already versus having it build up and be suppressed. Notice maybe if your body tells you, if your heart rate increases or if your breathing is stopping or restricted or if you 
have a stabbing pain in your heart or if your throat is constricted or if your bladder starts to hurt or your back or your neck hurts or you don't feel your feet anymore because you you are kind of out of your body or you're hot and sweaty and you don't know why or you do know why or you're freezing cold and you're running internally whatever the trigger might be let it just kind of come up and see what you can do in a moment of trigger in order to help yourself is it a time out is it communication with nature is it music or singing or screaming into a pillow or going in a forest and scream or is it throwing plastic bottles because they don't break they are safe to throw maybe is it a silent scream or is it sitting down and meditating and calling up on your guides and the loved ones in the light who assist you and help you. Maybe you want to take a moment to do that now. Connect to your resources. connecting to something greater because whatever we experience as human beings we are after all spiritual beings on this path and after recognizing our emotions we can maybe connect again with the bigger picture or we can connect with some kind of humor about about it from a detached perspective and say huh that again, or ah, this will pass, even though it's a cliche, yes, it will pass. So send loving waves of recognition to your body, to your emotions, and give yourself permission to be and to experience who you are right now. Stop judging. Give yourself the space you would give anybody else. Just for this moment, put yourself first and say, I am whatever this I am is for you in this very moment. And sense and feel into the shift within you, your body, your emotions, and your soul. Beautiful. And then taking these experiences with you, Knowing that we are indeed in this together as spiritual warriors on this planet called Earth. Please come back whenever you can into our group, into our circle. Take a nice deep breath, ground yourself. Oh, and thank you for 
being brave, especially a few of you. Yeah. I really acknowledge each and every one who was here and took on this path of bravery. Yeah. We're going to ask you to share in a moment, but I'll share what, what came for me as, as I followed along um, with this practice, this exercise, and that's that um, because I'm not supposed to be angry or get angry, um, I, it's hard to acknowledge that I am. And I think that's the first step really is to be able to say, as, as you said, I'm angry. Not you made me angry or that makes me angry, but to, to own it myself and say, yeah, I have this strong and uncomfortable feeling that I'm not supposed to feel, so I shouldn't even admit it to myself, but I'm angry. I feel, I feel angry. It's, it's my anger, not yours. It's, can't blame it on, well, it's easy to blame on other people, but whose anger is it? It's my own. And once I can acknowledge that I am, it's much harder to do something harmful with it. Once I acknowledge that I have that, then I can work with it. And I, I mean, most of us know how to do parts therapy. You can talk with the angry one. Have that conversation. Find out what it's about. Find out what's behind it. Find out what it needs to, to resolve that or express that. It, as Jana said, it can be something creative. It doesn't have to be destructive. Like Ali said, there's a kind of righteous anger. There's, there's, there's injustice in the world. And it's, I think it's okay to be angry about that. And it doesn't have to be destructive. But first is acknowledge it. Right? And then work with that part of yourself that's angry. It's much safer than bottling it up or letting it explode. Now someone else. What did you find on that beautiful journey? Mm hmm Lisa? No, we don't hear you. You're unmuted, but we don't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of that face. Just like this. Now, now, yeah, now can you hear, hear me? You. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now we can. <laughs> now you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... I said that just, I don't hear you now, but okay, I speak if you hear me, so it's okay. okay. <laughs> so I, I, for me, you, you talked about the spiral and I went really deep um, to uh, the moment of my birth. Mm -hmm. oh. and, and I was angry because it was the first moment that I didn't got what I needed. Mm. And I, I, I just didn't mm. got the hug I needed. I didn't got the the care I needed. I didn't. Everything was wrong. Like it was cold. It was unpleasant. And um, that's mm. it. And and I, I just uh, breathed into that, and uh, slowly it it come down. And. I understood that all anger, like it was really like uh, one of the thirsts, like the first experience, which was not perfect. That everything for, for me, I can talk for myself, that everything which is not perfect annoys me. Mm. Uh, uh, kind of personality, but uh, it was like the first moment, so it was powerful. But then when you told to connect to higher force, so I, I, I felt really holded that I'm not alone and it's okay and um, that's it it was beautiful thank you did you want us to unmute you Ali yeah right um Actually, in the journey, I overlooked all my experiences in life. It's difficult to hear you. Can you speak a bit louder for us? You over. Oh, can you hear me? Is it okay now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said that in the journey, I just overlooked all my life. Mm. And 
it was a lot of injustice, whatever, for any reason, my culture, my family, whatever. But all the feeling that I had, it was sorry and negligence, like the experience of that dog, which was very good, um, you know, impression of me when Sophia said that. I really felt myself same as that dog because, you know, um, a lot of injustice was in my life. And unfortunately, the anger comes to, you know, whoever is even closer to me. And I just was thinking that it comes from two different parts of my soul. I have one part, which is very kind, very um, wise. The other part is really attacker, you know, and um, it comes from imperious self. Imperious self is, is mm -hmm. a self that really I have to fight with. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to figure it out how it comes to me in, in two ways. One is prevention of getting angry. The other one is management. I think today our discussion is about management, but I think uh, prevention also is a nice step you know, to prevent how you can do that. It's, it's a process. It's not as easy that I say, okay, I just, you know, block it. No, it's not. You have to work through it. You have to, um, for example, it, it's different type of anger it comes. It's different management or different prevention it needs. For example, you know, if the kid, my kid is trying to, you know, be, unrespectful to me, I have to just think for 30 seconds first before, you know, in person. I mean, <laughs> just throwing everything at her or him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's different about my vibe is different, different from, you know, my parents. So each and everyone has different type of prevention. Um, and I thought that life is not black or white. There are a lot of colors between, and I have to accept that, you know, you think it must be black, especially when you're angry, you think it's definitely, this is the right thing that I'm thinking, but it might be not. That's why you, you feel injustice, however, it's not. It's your perception because you are under attack of angriness. Under attack of angriness, the mind doesn't work well. No, that's right. I know that one before. I know, okay, I'm angry. My mind is not trustable. Let's don't do anything. Mm. And that might help a lot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think you touched upon really an important point. Um, uh, that's what I meant also with the recognition of your triggers. So what triggers you and different triggers need different techniques in terms of how you respond. That's what you call prevention. So when you, when you have different triggers, which you recognize that triggers me and that triggers me, trigger A might need a different response than trigger B. And that's learning how to, how to recognize it and then ultimately also how to respond to it versus how to react to it and then um, release it if you need to. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Ali. Yeah. One more? A lot of process there. Anybody wanna share what came, what they found behind their anger? Yes, okay. Uh, call me. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be, uh, this much, to be honest. Well, initially, I went through sadness like the rest of the group for the most part. And then again, I bumped into abandonment that this was abandoning a part of myself oh. that I perceived not hmm. to match the image that I drew for myself to uh, the internal conditioning that I have to behave certain way, to be certain way. Uh, hmm. Then this brought the realization that the anger I time to time feel is mostly, if not all the time, is towards myself for 
not being that person or uh, the, that part of me that's that feels entitled to go through all these emotions without any judgment so mm-hmm. that's my uh, adult self that's not accepting that uh, anger or that part of me that's feeling these emotions so uh, yeah it was an emotional one but towards the end after recognizing it and allowing it to flow through me then I found some settling feeling uh, so yeah just recognizing myself as being perfect as I am whatever it is uh, was helpful so thank you Thanks for sharing. Thank you, yeah. yeah that was a deep dive mm-hmm. really deep dive mm-hmm. Sarah wanted to say something before she raised her hand, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you unmute, Sarah? Um, yeah. Well, you unmute. Sure. Let me unmute you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the first exercise, um, when I felt the anger in my throat, in this area, the neck, as soon as that happened, my heart just felt so soft and it just mm-hmm. went direct to my heart. It was very, very soft. And in the second exercise, um, there was a very young, young me that said, very young me that said, I didn't mean to. Um, or, or no, first of all, it said, it wasn't my fault. I didn't mean to, and I don't understand. Mm. And I think that's very much about getting mm. shouted at all the time and just not making sense of anything or understanding. And I think that's yeah. possibly where the fear is for, yeah. So that was yeah, sometimes when we're angry, it's the child, right? That's angry. We're not, we're not the adult self. And mm-hmm. whoever's around us thinks they're looking at an adult, and it's not. It's the wounded child or the angry child, the, the lost, abandoned, hurt child. Yeah, we, we regress spontaneously. Yeah. Wow. Good. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. For me, um, it is definitely fear beneath. Mm. And beneath is responsibility for others. It's a very particular and personal situation. I will not share the details, but um, uh, I just realized and that there's so much work I did already in this area. Um, I just realized that uh, I need to heal that part. Mm-hmm of the relationship and and to somehow just accept probably acceptance is the mm-hmm. the key. Yeah. You and you yeah. can't get there as long as you're judging the anger and, and, and ignoring it or suppressing mm-hmm. it or because it lies beneath it. Beautiful example. Yeah. 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 Franklin. Hi, Isan. Is- nice to see you. Am I, am I yeah. allowed to speak? Yes? yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can hear you. Uh, something uh, completely different came up. Uh, I was looking for anger and uh, didn't find mm. anymore. And but I was always looking, also su- looking for support. And mm. then my support came from uh, Angel Gabriel. Mm-hmm. It's Friday, it's light, it's her day today. Mm-hmm. So it's another perspective and it uh, mm-hmm. felt okay for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, Absolutely. it's such an interesting point because mm-hmm. for many who felt helpless and powerless, mm-hmm. anger feels very powerful and they look to the anger or they use the anger for power. But I think it's a really good point. There's other sources of anger that can be much more beneficial. And crying out or calling out or or using in desperation, the anger for strength helps us survive very difficult or traumatic situations. But remember, as Sophia said, the other resources within. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm Hmm. 
Isan, did you want to say something? I see. Oh. Yes. Uh, hi to everybody. I apologize. I'm quite late because I've forgotten that next four days the market is going to be closed. Oh. oh. And therefore, I had to go to shopping and oh, yeah. I missed the opportunity, but I will uh, follow from the YouTube and the other yeah. channels. And anger is mm, my special area. So I focus a lot because I'm living in a country full of mm. anger people. Mm. And I'm living in a city in Istanbul. It's full of uh, people having anger a lot. So naturally, mm, I would like to release my previous angers my uh, emotions and you may remember Paul in one of the uh, trainings and you gave me a kind of therapy mm -hmm. uh, especially for the politicians remember I do yes and so but I missed the opportunity and I really try to release these things and these angers Mm -hmm. uh, with some meditations almost every day mm -hmm. I meditate and I do what's called seven paths so I benefit a lot and as Sophie said there are a lot of techniques and different angers to different answers uh, I'll do my best but still I have a lot mm. yeah thank you I, I just okay. saw you it's interesting I really saw you swallow after you spoke. Mm. And yes. Yeah. Thank I'm you. I'm still hot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing. You know. Yeah. And mm. yeah. do you have something for us? Uh, I don't know. and Dubai. Ah, uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, thank you for welcoming me. Mm -hmm. Um, the first experience uh, was a very uh, good experience to release it uh, from my body and it was a really good uh, technique to use. The second experience, uh, I think I went really deep, mm. I'm still like uh, after meditation or something <laughs> and uh, I felt uh, the fear underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I uh, recognize it of the fear of uh, being left alone. Mm. And then I realized uh, like it went deeper to the separate, uh, separated from the oneness. Mm. Oh. Um, yeah. Yep. Something yeah. like this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then when you said I am Mm. and went all kind of things inside of me and in the end was i am love mm. and when i heard i am love i relaxed <laughs> and it connected me again to the oneness to the oneness yeah beautiful and gave me like a key uh, maybe how to use it uh, with the anger for the next time beautiful thank, thank you. you for sharing mm -hmm. that's the key and <laughs> Uh, Nitsan shared that after she got out of the womb, how, you know, there we still have a sense of being being in that protective mm. environment coming from oneness and maybe in there we kind of, depending on our experience in the womb, obviously. But if we have that, we, we bring it out and then touch, come here, planet Earth, yay! <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not necessarily a resource. So yes, and 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 uh, falling out of oneness yeah. is, I think, the core yeah. pain, yeah. which is maybe above. Oops, where are you? There you are. Which is above or below all of the other pains. So thank you. That yeah. was beautiful. How you explained that. The abandonment and then how for me there was a circle in your experience coral wounds so the thank coral you wounds. for letting where, me experience it where are you coming to us from israel 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Nice. Yes, thank you. He's my friend. Yeah, yeah. okay. He's my friend. Friends. Oh, yay. You know, when I had my near death experience, when I got hit by lightning, that was one of the most profound, mm -hmm. transformative parts of it was to experience oneness again, to really be in, not as a concept, but to be in that oneness. And then to come out of it again, I realized that that's just, you said, that's, that's the big totally. core wound that we carry is this, this separateness. And I think we're all trying to find our way back. Yeah. Yes. It's nodding too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That was a really important sharing too. Thank you, everyone. Thank what, you. A, what a beautiful group and how we can create yeah. such a resource for each other with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Really beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We see you all next Friday, mm -hmm. we hope. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for being you. brave yeah. and coming and everyone. sharing. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. To all of you. Bye. Mm. Thank you. From heart to heart. Yep. Bye. 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 Bye.